Hey y'all, Tata Guy here. So recently I made a couple videos on how to use Spark for data processing and how to use Kafka for monitoring a stream and then submitting that data to a consumer for downstream processing. And today I wanna to bring them all together. So what I'm gonna show you in this video is a comprehensive Kafka and Spark pipeline that's going to be an end-to-end -end pipeline that you can use to take data, listen to an API or a data location, so any directory where data might be landing, maybe it's for another team, it's a report, whatever. Listen to data arriving at that point, at that location, and when data arrives, use Kafka to submit that data to a Spark cluster for processing, and then using that Spark cluster to batch process that uh, data file. So, really cool stuff here. Uh, really, you know, just real world useful, good to have an automated batch processing workflow, and so, Let's get into it. The first thing we'll do is show you how to build the Kafka script, then show you how to build the Spark script. So first thing we'll do is just create a uh, Python, or a, sorry, a Kafka uh, producer script in Python. So Kafka producer.py. And then as per usual in our Python scripts, we're gonna import a list of packages. So here we're gonna import OS to interact with our uh, core operating system, time to interact with time objects, JSON to take and receive and emit JSON data and work with that. Uh, watchdog observers, file system event handlers, these are what's going to allow us to observe uh, and detect a change in a file system. And then we have our Kafka producer uh, object, which is going to allow us to define the script as a Kafka producer uh, and define our endpoint, which is going to be that file system as our kind of Kafka producer endpoint. Uh, then what we're going to do is define a class that will allow us to actually create uh, the file watcher. Um, so here, this is going to inherit from the file system event handler provided by Watchdog, and then the onCreate method. Here, I'll actually build it out for you before I start explaining it, getting ahead of myself. So here, what this will look like is a few different functions. So here, we have this uh, file watcher, so initializing, first just initializing the actual task, uh, or the actual function within this class. So we're creating a class, just kind of a bucket of these different actions. Uh, and then this onCreated method is going to trigger when a new file is detected in the monitor directory. And then it will call the process file method to read and then send that file's contents to Kafka. And that's what this process file method is doing. It's reading the contents of that new file that was just arrived in its location. And then it's going to send it as a JSON message to the specified Kafka topic using that Kafka producer instance. So we have two actions, just a detecting the creation and then a processing action, which is sending this uh, to a Kafka topic, which is, if you haven't watched my previous videos on Kafka, it's basically just a bucket for, for events to be generated to and consumed from. So now that we have the file watcher class defined, what we'll then do is define our function, um, which is going to be start producer. So this is going to actually start our producer object within Kafka. So here I'll show you the function and I explain it. So here we have start producer. And what this is doing is basically initializing the Kafka producer function with the given Kafka bootstrap servers. And then it's going to set up a serializer to convert the Python dictionaries to JSON strings. So that's what's happening here. Then we're creating an instance of that file watcher class and attaching it to the watchdog observer. So that's basically allows it to run and observe the specified directory for any file creation events here. And then when a file creation event is observed, then it is going to call the onCreated method of the uh, file watcher class. So that's gonna be triggered through the file watcher class. And then here we're just running this uh, until interrupted by either pressing control C, um, otherwise just going to run indefinitely. So then the only thing left to do in this script um, is just initializing it all at the bottom. So declaring, so we define the functions and the classes, but we also need to declare them to enact them. So if name equals main, just directory to watch. So the actual uh, directory you want to use. So local, um, and then the Kafka topic. So this is that uh, topic that is going to contain any data emitted from this producer object. Kafka bootstrap servers. This is just the standard location for running Kafka on a local machine, and then just starting this producer function with these uh, with these characteristics. So director to watch Kafka topics. So you can change these, and the producer function will still work because you, know, you want to have a repeatable function for many different locations. 
So that is all we needed to do on the Kafka side of things. So then what we'll do is also set up our Spark consumer. So here we have Spark consumer.py. And what this is going to do is consume that data that was admitted from the Kafka producer when that file arrives in that location. So to start building our Spark consumer script, we will uh, import a whole list of libraries and packages as usual. So here we have our PySpark uh, Spark session, our functions, so column and from JSON to read data from that JSON that we're sending over from that Kafka producer script. Then we're importing struct type, struct field, string type, uh, Kafka consumer as well, and then import JSON and OS for the exact same reasons we imported them in the previous script. Um, then what we'll do is define our batch process. Um, so here, what we can do um, is basically and also define logging too. So just always nice to have logging in here. So I'll add a logger. Um, and then with batch process, here we have a batch process for a data frame. So this is just kind of an example batch processing script uh, where all we're doing is just looking at the length of the data frame, showing the content length, um, and then writing that to a output directory. Um, so this is where you would likely want to customize it for your own batch processing um, information, but I don't have anything, to, uh, you know, I don't really care about actually batch processing. I just looked at the length here as an example, um, but yeah, definitely want to get more complex here. Um, and then we also have this, if there's an exception, just throw us a message in logs, but batch processing failed uh, with the seek. And also import logging too. I don't know why that's not done. So import logging. Then once we're done with our batch process function, we can then define our uh, start spark batch processing. So here, this is going to be a spark session we're gonna create. So with our Kafka bootstrap servers using our Kafka topic. So here we're initializing our spark session. Notice outside of the definition of this function. Um, and then we have our schema struct type. So here we're creating a new data structure called schema, which is just file name and the content of that file. Then once we're done with that, we will try to read a data frame um, from Spark. So you're using Spark. So here's what we're going to do is try data frame equals Spark reading in the format for, of a Kafka output option. Uh, you know, this is typical of Spark. You gotta define exactly where the data is coming from or where you're, uh, what kind of data you're ingesting if you're connected to another service. And then that option subscribe to a Kafka topic. So telling this to consume data from that Kafka topic, then loading whatever data is contained within there. And then here we have uh, an expression where we're casting the values from the JSON data as strings, making sure that they're all in the proper format, and then selecting uh, columns JSON data or uh, selecting the data uh, column, and then just selecting all from that particular data column. And then here we just have an exception, so fail to read from Kafka if there's any errors, and just putting that into uh, our logs file. And then once this operation is done, it's consume that particular piece of data, stop the Spark session because Spark clusters are expensive to run. And that is almost all you have to do here. So the other step is, um, so similarly to how we defined our Kafka script, you're gonna have this name equals main, Kafka bootstrap servers, localhost 9092, Kafka topic file updates, and then Spark uh, st start Spark bash processing. Uh, Kafka bootstrap servers, the Kafka topic as well. Um, so super easy way to kind of define and you know just have a really easy to use asynchronous batch processing pipeline. You also might want to think about layering Airflow on top of this as kind of a universal um, metrics monitoring layer. Um, you know, otherwise you're basically just going to be relying on running these scripts and then monitoring the terminal output afterwards for, for logging and debugging purposes. So the way you would want to run this is, you know, you run uh, Python Kafka producer dot pi, um, and I still need to install Python. I got a new computer now, so still setting it up. Um, but essentially, what you do is you run this first Kafka script, and then you run your Spark consumer script, and then what this will do, and then every time you want to consume. So again, this is where you probably want to host this and have it um, emit to that Kafka topic, just or pull from that Kafka topic on like a regular basis um, because this on its own is just going to emit the information to the Kafka topic and then make it available to that Spark uh, script to actually take and consume it. But 
you'll also need to schedule and initiate that Spark script or host it somewhere um, because otherwise it'll only run when you explicitly trigger it um, because Spark doesn't really have the concept of like a long-lived host, so that's why I say you want to layer Airflow in this as well or another type of workflow management tool just to have another triggering system um, here as well. So hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you learned something. Just thought it was a cool little uh, project to throw together uh, and hope you have a great rest of your day. Data guy out.